So this is a quick video about a breakout board that I've made for these things. They're ESP8266 devices and they're all the rage now on eBay and AliExpress and provide the exciting opportunity to connect to an Arduino or similar microcontroller over serial lines and then connect to a Wi-Fi network uh, wirelessly of course and uh, this presents fantastic opportunities for giving simple microcontroller projects internet connectivity. So the circuitry for my breakout board looks as follows. At this end we have got an FTDI Arduino standard uh, connector there so you can connect a, a fairly standard cable that you might connect to your Arduino or one of these basic breakout boards such as this so that can just plug into the unit. We've then got some pull-up resistors here for the various uh, power down, reset and GPIO lines. Far easier to put in extra pull-up resistors at the design stage so may not need all of those uh, but put them all into the design. Uh, a little bit of supply decoupling is always a good idea. A low dropout regulator to provide 3.3 volts for the ESP8266. Uh, a connector here to connect up to the ESP8266 and a bit of level shifting here just to take the signals coming from the PC or whatever 5 volt micro and drop them down to 3.3 volts so they can go into the ESP8266 and not destroy the device. And here's the actual PCB that I produced. It's a very simple design, designed to require no drilling or anything like that. So it can be produced by the Tata transfer method and hedged at home. And this is the actual concrete realization of it with a six pin connector there to plug in the FTDI connection this way up and then little jumper cables running from the eight breakout connections there to the dual row header on the little uh, 8266 device. And on the flip side, I've just etched out the corner there so that that ground plane there doesn't attenuate the antenna signals or the signals coming in from the Wi-Fi too much. So plugging this guy into the PC is as simple as hooking up the little breakout board and then plugging the breakout board into the computer and we'll see that we get uh, a little red LED showing up there to indicate that there's power to the SP8266 board. I've created a simple IPython notebook to test the command set of the SP8266 I've done this in preference to using Serial Console because the IPython notebook lets me blend opening the serial connection and other commands with some nice documentation. So further on down the track, I can see what I've done and reproduce the steps if required. It also captures the output for me, which is really neat. So let's give it a go. So first thing I want to do is to open the serial port that the SP8266 is connected to and set the board rate. In my case, I needed to put 9600. That's what my ESP8266 came configured as from the factory. But you may need to experiment with this figure and plug in another standard board rate and see how you go. Also set a rather long timeout here. Uh, this just means that it's giving the ESP8266 quite a long time to respond with some data back. It means that the testing is kind of slow and I'm going to edit that out of the video, but it does mean that we capture all the serial output coming from the ESP8266. So the first thing I want to do is to test the uh, whether the device is responding and that's as simple as issuing the AT command. So if I execute this now, we'll see that the device responds with AT and the word OK. So that means it's there and it's listening and we've got bi-directional communication between our device and the serial port. OK, next I want to try resetting the device and uh, the references on the internet say that you can do this with AT plus RST. So let's give that a go and see what we get as output. A 
And this is our output. As you can see, it responds with OK once more after a short pause and then a little string showing the URL to the vendor and the firmware version number and the word ready. Okay, next thing I want to do is to put it in client mode. So I'm going to issue the command at plus CW mode equals one. That's going to turn it into a, a Wi-Fi station or client rather than an access point. In this case, the device responds with the words no change. And this is simply indicating that it was already in this mode beforehand. Next thing I want to do is to look at the access points that are in range that I could potentially connect to. And to do that, we just use AT plus CW LAP, which I assume means list access points. So I'll execute that command now. And we can see a big long list of access points in range here. We can see their received signal strength and the channel that they're on and so on and so forth. I've blocked out the SSIDs here to keep people's uh, SSIDs private and have also blocked out the MAC addresses. But normally if you were to issue this command, you'd get a listing here of all the SSIDs of the access points in range and their corresponding MAC addresses. Okay. Now what if I want to connect to one of these access points? I can simply issue AT plus CWJAP and then the SSID of the access point and the password. So I've just used the tethering feature on my phone to give this a try. So I've created this uh, temporary access point. I'll connect to it now. And the device responds with OK. So we've now joined the access point successfully. So the last thing we want to do is check the IP address of the ESP8266. This has been signed by the Wi-Fi hotspot using DHCP. And so if I type in AT plus CIFSR and issue that command, it should return with the assigned IP address. And there's the IP address listed after a very short time. We could ping that IP address if we really wanted to and make sure that connectivity over the Wi-Fi network to the ESP8266 was working. But for the moment, I'm satisfied with how things have gone. So I'm just going to close the serial port. So that's it for today. Now that I know how this device works, I hope to start building it into other exciting projects.